Should you be spending $500 on crossover or is it all a huge mistake? If you haven't subscribed already, then please consider scrolling down and pressing the subscribe button and you'll be able to keep up to date with the latest Mac gaming news. So if you didn't already know, Crossover is a method of running Windows games on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac and Crossover is capable of running plenty of AAA games, including Battlefield 5, Halo Master Chief Collection, God of War 2018 and plenty of others too. Today, what I'm going to be doing is discussing the kind of economics of Crossover and also comparing their standard tier against their lifetime $500 tier. So if you are interested in buying Crossover, then please make sure to click the link at the top of the video description. If you do make a purchase, it's really going to help to support the channel and the work that I do. So once you get to this page and you press the buy button, what you're going to be met with is three different options. So the option on the left is the Crossover trial. So you get a 14 day completely free trial where you can test out the full functionality of Crossover. And after that, you're going to need a license. And I think that 99.99% of people are going to be buying the Crossover Plus. And what this basically entitles you to is one year of free software updates. Crossover isn't a subscription service because you're going to be entitled to any version of Crossover that is released in the year that you bought your license in. However, as compatibility becomes more and more complex, you're going to want to keep resubscribing in order to keep up with the latest versions of fixes. But we also have the option of buying the lifetime license. So this costs $499.95. And if you think about it, it's a pretty good deal because if you're buying Crossover Plus for multiple years, then eventually you're going to be spending more more than the lifetime license. But we're not going to stop there because we're going to do a bit of a deeper dive into the full value of what Crossover can bring and what the best prices are. What I've done here is I put together a spreadsheet calculating how many years of Crossover Plus you'd need to buy until you recoup your cost of Crossover Lifetime. That's because we're spending $59.95 every year until we hit the $4.9995 mark. However, it is not actually that simple because there are actually ways to get Crossover Plus for cheaper. So if you go to the Crossover website and you enter the promo code Apple Gaming Wiki, then you're automatically going to be entitled to a 25% discount. And so this brings the pricing to $44.96. So this changes our calculations just a little bit. And that means that for the price of Crossover Lifetime, we could actually buy 11.12 years of Crossover Plus. But this is not the end of the story because the calculations get even more interesting. That's because Crossover Plus also entitles you to special renewal pricing. A lot of people don't know this. If you go to your account and click on the Your Account button, and then you go to My Account, and then you go to the side bar here and then you click on support licenses and then you can find your current license and you go down to press renew now and as you can see if you have an active license you're entitled to a $30 discount and this brings the price down to $29.95. And by the way, if you still click our affiliate link and do the renewal process, we're still going to be credited and you'll be helping to support this channel. So if we go back to our spreadsheet, then that makes the Crossover Plus license even more of a good deal. In the first year, you're going to be spending $44.96 with the discount code. And then every year that you renew, you're going to be renewing at $29.95 instead of the full price or the discounted price. You'd need to be using Crossover Plus for over 16 years before you broke even with Crossover Lifetime. Therefore, it looks like Crossover Lifetime is becoming less and less of a good deal. If you keep using Crossover Plus with the discounts, then you could have the flexibility of switching to a whole different type of computer and then you won't have sunk in all that money into a license that you potentially might not use in five years time. So firstly, when we're talking about Crossover, it's a little bit misleading to talk about it in terms of value. That's because Crossover, it's also the main company that's the driving force behind the open source project called Wine. And Wine is not just used in Crossover, it's also used in Proton as well. And this allows Windows games to be run on the Linux operating system and also the Steam Deck as well. And really what this project is all about is freeing games from their walled gardens. Because one day companies like Microsoft might say that you can only play these games if you use our very invasive DRM. However, Crossover and Codeweaves are trying to do the exact opposite. They're trying to free games so that they work on Linux, Mac OS, on the Steam Deck. And Wine is an open source project that hundreds of people contribute to. If you do a search, you'll see that Codeweavers are responsible for over 70% of the commits. And therefore the majority of funds that are spent on Crossover are really invested back into the wine project. In essence, buying crossover is also like making a donation to the wine project. Therefore, you should be thinking of crossover not just as a piece of software that can run games, but also as a project that helps to support open gaming on open platforms. So for gamers on Macs, you might not think that crossover is that great. That's because plenty of games aren't compatible with Crossover. However, there's only really one company that's trying to look out for gaming on the Mac, and that is Codeweavers. They've had such an uphill battle, especially as Apple have changed the rules for what can run on a Mac 
over and over again. And the future of Crossover is also looking brighter and brighter. So DirectX 12 support is going to be integrated into Crossover in the very near future. And Crossover version 22 is going to be released later this year. And it's going to incorporate Wine 7.0 support, which is going to massively increase the performance of 32-bit games running on the M1 chip. And also, if you check out the latest nightly builds of Crossover, you'll also see that I've been working on a brand new interface, which looks fantastic. So anyway, Code Weavers and Crossover, they deserve all the support that you can give them. I hope you found this video interesting and useful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.